All right. We are recording. We are live. So, guys, I am coming to you live out of Bend, Oregon. If you hear a little bit of buzzing, it's not static. It's uh, the Deschutes River in Bend. Pretty gorgeous out there. Uh, so I'm, I'm in Bend training a number of different branches, mortgage coach leaders. If you are in Bend, Oregon, or you want to drive to Bend, Oregon, I do have mortgage coach stickers, so come check it out. Uh, you know, I am not going to take the lead on today's call. Uh, Mr. Todd Bookstand, my wing man uh, for our Friday calls, this is his call. So he's going to lead it. We have Keith Collins on the first 30 minutes. Uh, but to me, this is something that's super important uh, for a number of reasons. You know, when you look at Bill Hart's top seven things that top producers do, literally three out of those seven get handled if you're using win by noon or a planner of some sorts on a daily, weekly, monthly basis. So the best of the best, they plan what they're going to do daily, weekly, monthly. They time block to make sure they do the most important things. And, and they record. They're recording how many calls did I make today, how many calls did I make this week, uh, how many conversations did I have. So this is a super important call. Uh, I want you to take notes. I want you to be present. And then we are going to have a recording of this. Yes, it will be in our YouTube channel. Yes, it will be in our Facebook group as a live call. And this is something that I urge you guys to not only rewatch yourselves, but rewatch with your teams. So whether you're a branch manager and you lead a branch, whether you're a team leader and you lead a team, whether you're an individual loan officer, you have a team. You have people that help you achieve your goals. So hopefully this will be something that gets reused, rewatched. With that said, I'm going to bring in the founder of Win by Noon, Todd Bookspan, to lead today's call. What's up, Todd? Hey, not a whole lot. I am so excited to be here and, you know, really appreciate you encouraging me, Dave, to um, jump in and lead this call today. Rock it out, brother. I can't wait. I'll be taking notes and listening, and I'll, I'll jump in on the second half and try to add some color. All right, well, jump in any time. You know, here's, here's sort of, let me set up the call for all of you today. You know, first off, this isn't a win by noon call. This is a call for anybody who wants to uh, learn to plan better, right? Anyone who wants to actually kick off 2020 with momentum, to close out the year um, and really take a look at what it is that the best of the best are doing in the industry in order to gain momentum. And then, yes, Davis said, hey, break it down how you would do it in win by noon. And just know when I break it down, how we do it in win by noon, you can use, you know, a notebook or any paper, do the same types of things to, to grow your business. And I was kind of excited that uh, Keith said he would jump on with me because Keith is not only a win by noon user, but he's also a leader within his organization. And he's got um, a number of folks in his office um, and on his team that use the product as well. So he'll be able to kind of jump in and give a different perspective, right? It's one thing to hear me talk about it, but I think it'll be uh, something different to hear Keith talk about it. So welcome, Keith. You've been sitting there quietly while uh, Dave and I have been going. What's going on, guys? How are you guys doing? I'm, I'm, I'm stoked to be here today. It's, uh, it's always a fun collaboration for sure. Yeah, I think it's, you know, I think it's kind of interesting. So I kind of want to give you guys a warning before I sort of get into the top habits of top producers, right? And so um, the warning I want to give you is you guys already know this stuff, right? You know it. The challenge is, is you're probably not doing it the way that you think you should be doing it, right? I want to challenge you guys to really push yourselves um, to absorb what it is I'm saying, maybe from a different perspective. Maybe think about it from, hey, how frustrated I am with where I'm at at the end of 2019. Um, and maybe that'll be what'll push me up to be better in 2020. Maybe look at it from the perspective of understanding it's hard, right? It's hard for you. It's also hard for top producers. And let's try to figure out what is the difference between what you're doing and what they're doing. Let's look at some of the ways that they're creating tactics, how they're measuring their metrics, how they're determining what to do. And so um, I created a little PowerPoint. So I'll share my, uh, my PowerPoint as I go and keep myself on screen as well. So you guys can uh, see that if it's, if your uh, little video of us is blocking, you just drag it over to the side. So I call this top habits of top producers. And I was going to number and I thought, you know, what, let me just kind of roll um, through these things because as, as uh, Dave mentioned, you know, my uh, me friend, mentor and coach Bill Hart um, talked about these seven disciplines. In fact, I want to give a shout out. He's going to actually be on the Friday call with Dave and I, um, so we can sort of take a deeper dive and do a little comparison in there as well. Um, so stay tuned for that. Um, but I always start off with why do habits matter? And I think it's really critical because if I don't start off with why, 
if you as a leader aren't starting off with why with your team, and then really as an individual, if you're not taking the time to dig into why does this matter, why do habits matter, you know, then you're going to most likely fail to launch. Um, and really, I think the biggest reason why is because of this, right? Oh my gosh, I mean, I think Keith can relate. He's laughing in the background, right? I mean, you see this in your office all the time, right? I mean, I see it in the mirror. That's where I see this. And so, I'm probably the most ADD person in the world. Well, and so I don't think that this is a surprise to all of us, but let me give you the statistic I think that matters, right? 94% of loan officers arrive in the office with no plan at all, right? So think about that. Of all of you on the call, there's, there's majority of you. And again, you know, you guys are the mortgage coach community. You guys are overachievers. But I think as a leader, you have to recognize this is what your folks are coming in with, right? They're coming in with no plan. And as a result, 91% have inconsistent month over month results, um, that's a Stratmore group uh, statistic from a couple of years ago. And every time I teach this, um, it's loan officer specific, but every time I teach this, if I'm teaching it to realtors, they kind of laugh because the realtor leader in the room says, yeah, that's you too. If I teach it to insurance agents, the, the leader in the room says, yeah, that's us too. And so this is it, right? So it's this whole idea of inconsistent month over month roller coaster results. And I think you have to understand that this is the risk, right? This is the why behind it. And I'm not going to spend a ton of time more talking about this, but I do want to kind of poke you in the side. As a leader, I want you to poke your people inside, get them thinking about, gosh, you know what? This is what's at risk. And I want to be consistent. So as I, as I walk through the habits, I'm also going to point out the differences between uh, top producers and everyone else. Top producers eliminate this roller coasters. They get consistent and they get consistent because they are, the part of the 6% that has that plan when they walk in and they actually have a written plan. I think that's also the difference, right? People all the time, you know, when I start talking about win by noon, right? So let me just show you guys this because it's super exciting. So I'm going to show it for one second, right? It's the brand spanking new hot off the press um, 2020 Q1 mortgage coach edition of, of win by noon. But, um, but what I want to tell you is, is that, you know, you have to have a written plan. And oftentimes I get pushback from people because they say, oh, Todd, I don't need a written plan because I've got my little phone and it's got everything in it. But I would challenge you on that, right? Most of you have a pad of paper that you're using to write things down on and that pad of paper gets lost versus people who have some type of planner and then that planner makes it into a drawer or on a shelf so you can go back and revisit it um, because that'll be one of the things we talk about is, is this idea of review. But ultimately, the top producers not only have a plan, but it's a written plan. And so um, those of you who've been plugged in the community, I've seen, I've taught now the last two weeks, a business planning course, how to business plan with your partners. And um, again, I'll throw up here a bunch of free resources for you guys. Again, um, I'll also throw up a discount at the end on win by noon. So stay tuned for that. If you do want to jump in on that, but I'm really going to give you guys lots of free stuff to give you guys ways to do it. So I will be running a business planning webinar on how to actually do this, but let me just give you the high level here. Um, and then always know that you can come jump on later and get um, even more detail from me, right? Because they actually know what their goal numbers are. There's that old quote that a, that a goal without a, um, without specificity is a wish or something, something crazy like that. Um, is this something Keith that you're doing with your loan officers right now? You're helping them do written plans. Yeah, absolutely. So we're actually teaching a, um, a mastermind class uh, on Friday. And the big, the big, I guess, talk around it is going to be the single page business plan. I, I think one of the things that, you know, if you separate top producers from the, you know, middle to lower producers is the, the thing that they, the big differentiator is they run their business like a business. And for me, that was one of my big changes is when I started making big, big leaps in my career is when I actually took back, look, you know, took time to look at my P&L, reviewed the progress of my business, um, where I was going and, uh, and where I was, and then and it's action, action steps around it. So I think that simple, that simple one page business plan is fantastic because, you know, if anything at all, it forces you to review your, your business plan at least once every 90 days because of the, you know, the activities down at the bottom. Well, I think that's critical, right? And people often ask, well, hey, why 90 days? And so, you know, when I throw up this, this business planning slide again, it's, it's got the, the cutout of the top of the planner when people jump into the planner to start, right? The first thing that it's going to show is your, you know, what were your 2019 numbers and then help people get their 2020 plan going. Um, but ultimately, yeah, you want to do an annual plan then you want to break down quarterly, like Keith said. And I, I would say two reasons, right? Number one, for yourself, it's easier to see how you're doing on track 
when you're looking at it over a shorter period of time. And number two, when I was teaching it for uh, this past two weeks for people to plan with their partners is it gives you a reason to be checking in with them weekly, to be meeting with them monthly, um, and then making sure that quarterly you're really dialed in with them um, on the same page. And so you'll see here that um, you're going to always pick out um, in mortgage for sure. And same with actually real estate and everything else, family serve, right? Units closed and then production volume. And so I see that as goals on everyone's across the board. We threw a third spot on there. I actually have people who then put in blanks for four or five. And that third one, normally the one I see the most is income. Um, I also see things like I'm going to hire an assistant, you know, I'm going to get, um, you know, I'm going to, you know, install a new CRM, some other specific action there. But even if you just get on there, what is my goal for the year for units and volume? I think that's important. Now, you know, I come from the school of thought that life matters and that your personal side, you know, really matters as well. And so on the personal side, I'll see certainly all the time, get fit, um, lose weight. Now you have to have specificity around that. So it's got to be like, Hey, I'm going to go to the gym three days a week. So if you actually look at mine, that's, that's what I've got on there. Go to the gym three days a week, walk, run, or hike three days a week. Um, specificity matters. Um, I see on there number of days of vacation, right? That's one of the things I've got a lot of uh, you who are focused on who I've helped with this tool. I see on there lose weight. That doesn't help, right? It's got to be lose five pounds or 10 pounds or whatever that is. And then the specificity around maybe what that plan looks like would, um, would help. Any, any feedback there, Keith, that you would give anyone when they're helping set their goals for this year? I mean, there's a, there's a really interesting acronym. It's SMART, you know, specific, measurable, attainable, attainable uh, risky, and timely. And so that's a really good little just acronym to kind of um, play against any goal that you put together. And I think the idea on a goal and specifically the action item around it is that uh, you've got to create accountability, accountability uh, to any of the goals I think that you put forth um, and that because that creates the energy. But you need to write the goal and the action item around the goal so specific, sorry, that you could uh, basically hand that to somebody else. They could look at it and clearly identify what you're trying to accomplish and then call you out on it. Like it's got to be that clear. Like somebody who's not in the mortgage industry should be able to take a look at your goal and the action items around it and be able to be like, did you do this? Did you not do this? And have clarity around what you're trying to go accomplish. It needs to be that simple. Well, and I love that. And I think that that SMART acronym is really good. And oftentimes I put an S on the ends for stretch yourself a little bit. Um, <laughs> one who over time has always set a, my normal goal and then a stretch goal. And, you know, I don't set a normal goal that I think is easy to achieve, right? It's a, it's a goal. I did business planning actually with my own team last week and we had people um, anywhere from, you know, kind of, I call him my old timer. I shouldn't say that because he may be on the call. Um, you know, he wants to grow 5% next year. But the part about it too is when you look at his personal side of it, he actually wants to do it where um, he's got six full weeks of vacation as well. So that's going to be a, you know, a push for him. Um, you know, someone else uh, wanted to grow 10%. Well, why? He's just nervous about, again, the changing market and where he's at, but he had a pretty good year and doesn't want to crush it versus someone else who totally did a stretch goal of doubling their business. Um, and then, so again, we'll talk about the action steps to get there. And then, yeah, that T piece really, it's gotta be time sensitive. Give yourself kind of a by when, as um, they would say um, in the coaching world. Um, and so I would start there with just what's that written goal. And you don't need to go further than that. And I'll make sure I, I post into the group, the feed down below on Facebook, um, the first quarter planning tool um, so that you guys have it for yourselves. I'll also post up in there the real estate agent version of it in case you guys want to use it with your realtors. And then um, I will get it uh, a link up to, to where, we, where you can watch a replay of the video where I taught it. Um, I would say one of the other habits of top producing loan officers is they manage by calendar, not by email. Um, and I almost said kind of also you know, not by fire, but you know, there's a lot of us tell me if you can relate. I'm not like making eye contact with any of you out there in, in uh, Facebook land or on zoom, but oftentimes we get up and we start our day checking our email and then we start reacting to those things or maybe we're good. We do our morning routine, which by the way is another habit of top producers is a super solid morning routine. And we get in the office and then the first thing we allow is we allow our email to dictate what we do next versus top producers are going to, are going to live by their calendar. So let's use Josh metal as an example. You guys have seen Dave and I interview him lots of times. And what he would tell you is he starts with his gratitude meeting every day, right? If you start with a grateful mindset, there's so many studies that show that you're going to have a better day. So he brings his whole team in on it and then they launch straight into two hours 
of mandatory, not optional, right? Not like, oh, I got this realtor who wants to meet or a client who wants to meet. It's actually mandatory that they do two hours of proactive lead generation, right? And so they're not, they're not managing by email. They're doing those big blocks first, right? They schedule those in. Um, the other thing I would say you could throw in there for big blocks is um, for me, that would be like a field trip I was going on with my kids, right? That's super important. That's the personal side of things, right? Um, a big block could be, you know, an afternoon team meeting that you have to go to, right? Perfect example is for Keith, right? Keith is in a real estate office today, right? And you got a 930 hard stop, Keith, right? And you're going to run in there and, and go wow him with your brilliance, correct? I'm going to do my best, that's for sure. Um, and so yeah, that would be a big block, right? You could put that in there because here he is, he's got an opportunity with the 800 real estate agents that, um, you know, that he's, that work in, the, in that organization to, um, you know, to hang out. And so, you know, from that perspective, you got to schedule those big things first and you can't let anything get in the way, right? Um, yeah, just, go ahead, Keith. If I can, I'll t you jump in there. I, I think, and I don't know, I haven't seen these slides before, so I don't know what else is coming. Um, everything that you're putting up here is pretty fantastic. But I think that um, the calendar, there's, I think there's two things that really separate, at least from what I see, because I'm in two positions. One, I produce, but then I also manage producers. And I've got some 60, $60 million producers. And then, you know, we've got, you know, some 10, $15 million producers. But I think the big difference between those two is uh, one, their mindset around problems. Do problems derail their day or do they uh, deal with a problem and move on to the next thing, but their calendar and their scheduling. Um, and, you know, cause sometimes I'll just sit back and kind of look and, and see kind of how they're operating. And it seems like my top producers seem to always be in control of, of their day and their time and they don't look frantic. And I think that's often because they're paying attention to their calendar. The, the problem with real estate, it's a reactionary business. Uh, especially in home loans, is we have people um, asking us for stuff all the time. I need to get a pre-approval letter. I need to get this. I need to get that. I need, here's a new lead. Have you called it? And, and yes, a lot of those acts, those items are, are, in, in, are urgent, but are they important in that moment or are they as important as the things that we previously said we were going to do in the day, like, like prospect? And so the producer, I think, um, has the mental awareness to say, you know what, this being thrown at me is not, is urgent, but not important. And it can wait so I can focus on my prospecting, right? I, I find that the top producers come into the office and they're ready to attack the day because they have a clear plan on what they're supposed to do that day versus coming to the office and trying to figure out what's supposed to happen. Does that make sense? It totally makes sense. And it totally leads into these next couple slides. So I think that's really critical, right? So what Keith said there, um, let me just stop sharing so I can make my point off of video. So what Keith said, there, I think that's so critical is, is it important or is it urgent, right? So some of you have seen me teach before. I spent a lot of time talking about that because oftentimes what's urgent to somebody else is only important to you. Meaning, um, you know, not to discount their thoughts or concerns, but a realtor has got one hot lead that's important to them. And uh, or is urgent to them. And if that, if they have one hot lead and it's, you know, 9.55 a.m. and they have to, that person's expecting your call at 10 a.m. and they've made that commitment, then maybe you could argue that that's urgent. But what I would say is it's important. It's probably important that you follow up with that lead today and have a lead follow-up system, which, which I'll touch on in a little bit. But I think the key is, is be okay with coming up with a script that works for you that will put the realtor at ease and let them know that you've got their urgent, priority under control. And my script for that was awesome. Hey, thank you so much. I'm on it. And I didn't say I'm on it right this moment. I just said, awesome. I'm on it. And I trained my realtors that if they needed me to be on it at 10 AM to say, Hey, call Keith Collins at 10 AM. He's expecting your call. And then I could be on it at 10 AM. But normally they would just say, Hey, I'll have Todd call you today. And then I could say, I'm on it. I finished my proactive stuff. And then I would be able to react um, to them. Do you have any script for that at all, Keith, that you use? Yeah, I mean, letting them know that I'm on it, not telling them exactly when I'm on it, but um, there's a lot of really cool technology out there. Calendly is one and then Schedule Once. And Schedule Once is a program that I use and all the agents, my important agents that I work with, not all of them, but most of them have access to that calendar where, you know, because what was happening is I would get agents saying, hey, scheduling that and saying, hey, Keith's going to call you at 1030. And then they'd be like, hey, Keith, call this person at 1030. And for me, 10 to noon is prospecting time. So um, what I did was explain the importance of my schedule prospecting. I'm prospecting for you guys, not just for myself, right? This is how we go convert. 
Um, but here's a link where if you need to book someone on my calendar, just give them this link and they can grab a time that best fits their schedule. And I thought when I started doing that, that there was going to be some hesitancy because I was, you know, kind of separating myself or seeming somewhat disconnected or not connected to the business. But actually my clients are using that uh, more frequently and it's helping me manage my schedule because I'm looking at it and I just have appointments set up. Um, it's a, it's a really cheap, I mean, I don't like 15 or 20 bucks a month for Calendly or, or schedule once, but my agents have adopted it and my clients are using it and it's helping me stay true to what I need to be doing on a daily basis because what's blocked out is blocked out and times can't be booked during those times. So if I hear you correctly from, from 10 to noon, you're prospecting every day. So like I said, what's get scheduled gets done. You're managing by, by schedule, not by email or, or reaction. Right. And I'm guessing that if I went on there, I can't block, I can't book between 10 and noon because that's your proactive time. Correct. You can't, it's blocked out. See, so you're just taking control. And so someone's asking again, that's, he's using Calendly. So it's like Calend instead of ER on the end, it's L Y. Um, and so I say what gets scheduled gets done. This is a great Darren Hardy quote, you know, and I always bring in Darren Hardy because most of you know that Dave and I started this group three and a half years ago based off of Darren Hardy's insane productivity. So anytime I can bring Darren back into the equation and uh, use his brilliance to maybe spark a thought in you, he said, people walk into the office without a plan. Um, I like that. I put without a, as a one word. Without a, that's just a new word. Um, so people walk around waiting for fires, right? It's the same thing as looking in your email, looking for what your next, next tack, task is. But this is such a critical piece, right? Is that we do walk in there. Um, a realtor that I spoke with at an event, a big realtor event uh, last year, he got in front of his group and he said to his people, you all got in this business to set your own schedule. And I thought, okay, that makes sense. And they're all nodding their heads, yes. And then he says, and that's the exact reason you're, you fail. Um, he pointed out to them that they didn't have a written schedule. So he kind of set me up for me to teach win by noon to them afterwards. Um, and so they actually work what they call, what I call their ideal week. And so you already heard Keith say it. Hey, I, every day from uh, 10 to noon, I'm doing my prospecting time, right? I told you Josh Metal, ironically, two hours a day also does his prospecting time. That's their ideal week. They're building everything around it. Oftentimes you have to put something important in there. If I was Keith and I had the opportunity to be in front of a real estate office today, guess what? They're probably not going to move their meeting so that Keith can have it at noon after his prospecting time's over. Keith had to say, okay, is this important or urgent? He said, this will be urgent today. So I will, I will put that in there. He also of course said it was urgent to hang out with me and Dave on this call. So I'm super grateful um, that, for that as well. That's also prospecting, right? So to be able to identify that is that's prospecting. And then, and then also be able to tell the agent. So, you know, I'll have, like, let's say I'm setting up a coffee meeting with an agent. The agent says the only time I can meet is at 1030. I explained to them, Hey, that's actually, I'm a prospecting loan officer. And that's the time that I've set aside to prospect for myself and for my real estate partners. So is there any way that we could schedule the appointment at like two or three o'clock so that I can maintain prospecting and ensure that we have our, you know, 70% conversion rate or whatever, because we're conversion partners. So I think if you, you know, often there's a scarcity around saying no to a real estate agent, like, um, you know, hey, the only time the client can meet is seven o'clock at night. Well, I just don't do seven o'clock appointments because I have family, but I can do an early AM appointment or I have other people that can potentially talk to that customer. So it, it's, it's being prepared with a, a counter, if you will, but not a negative counter, a counter to an opportunity as to why you, you can't do what they want you to do. Does that, does that make sense? Totally um, makes sense. Totally makes sense. So I love that, right? I'm a prospecting loan officer, right? So I threw up on the screen here, uh, my go-to script, which is I have a commitment at that time. And I think that's really critical, right? I mean, obviously Keith is not saying, hey, I'm prospecting at that time when he's not. That's actually what his commitment is. And what I found is, is when I've taught this script um, out in the wild to other loan officers and real estate agents, they feel better about it, right? I used to say, I was taught, I, hey, tell people you have an appointment at that time or you're assisting a client at that time, which is true. I was had an appointment with myself or I, or I was assisting a client by doing lead follow-up and trying to assist them or my partner. But in the end, I love this idea that I've got commitment at that time. And I found when I started saying to someone who said, hey, can you meet me at 10 or 11 or nine or whatever that time was, I could say, gosh, I've got a commitment at that time. And that commitment was to me. You could also say that commitment was to my clients so that I would actually follow up with them. You could say that commitment was to my partner so I could make the you know, third, fourth, fifth, sixth lead follow-up call so that I can convert the leads at a higher percentage. Um, you could say that you know, Keith at night has a commitment to his family to be there for them. Those are commitments. And it's funny, when you say commitment, people are less likely to challenge you to meet them at that time. They're actually typically more likely in my experience and the experience of others who've used it 
to come in there. So I always want to make sure I arm you guys with that script. So now be prepared that you have to have a counter, right? You have to say, okay, I've got a commitment at the time. How about one, right? Or in Keith's case, hey, how about you jump on my calendar and you find a place that works for both of us together, right? How about, um, you know, let's meet tomorrow at two o'clock. Give them a commitment, you know, give them a counter and then prepare for them to say, gosh, no, that doesn't work. And then, then you're gonna have to say, okay, well, give me a different time. You're gonna have to throw that out there. Cause again, it's most likely if someone asks you to meet at 10 a.m. today, guess what their second option is gonna be? 10 a.m. tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So I always wanna throw that out there. Just know you may have to do it two or three times. And then at that point you have to decide, is it super important, right? Am I gonna be there, right? Is it gonna be like he's showing up for prospecting at the real estate office? Or are you gonna give up your most important time of the day to make that happen? Because that's uh, what I find in all of my studies of talking to loan officers is it's not that they didn't want to make their proactive outbound prospecting calls in the afternoon. It's that they just could never get back to it once they, you know, once they stopped, right? They started reacting. And so I think that's the key. You mentioned earlier, Keith, that, that LOs have a hard time. They have a hard time, uh, like with a bad day, right? They, they get off right. track. And so how do you get on track after you get off track from your prospecting time? Yeah. So, I mean, it's, it, I think Gene, uh, Gene posted this. I saw posted a, a um, an image this a couple of weeks ago, but I really resonated with it. And I said, did you have a bad day or did you really have a bad 20 minutes? And um, y you know, it's, it's interesting. Like I, I, the top producers in my office, I never hear, you know, them saying uh, my entire day got derailed by that file. Like it just doesn't, it doesn't come out of their mouth, but it does out of the, out of the individuals that are doing, that are doing, that are lower the half, lo lower half in production. And um, I don't know, you know, what the solution is, but, you know, get out of the office, take a walk, go hit the steering wheel. I, I don't know, but the, uh, your ability to disengage and re-engage quickly is going to determine, I think, your success because like, and I think it's mindset around it, right? We're, we're, often I find people looking for perfection in an imperfect business and that's the mortgage industry. Like it's just not perfect and, and it's not easy, but embrace that fact that it's not easy because we make a pretty good living. And the second gets, it gets easy, Quicken's going to come in and take over. So embrace the fact that it's challenging and that they need, you know, a, a chief deal structure, whatever you want to call yourself to, to be important, right? Be, I saw this the other day too, like be, on, um, be in demand, not on demand. And I really, I'm really thinking about that as I, as I plan my week and months ahead, be in demand, don't be on demand. And, um, and so, so for me, it, it's mindset around those issues when they come up. I, I sometimes just have to take a walk outside, refresh, take a deep breath and then come back in or, you know, just move on to the next thing. Like a couple incantations, like, Hey man, done with that call, moving on to the next one. Um, but the more you can realize your mindset in the moment being negative and then focus on getting out of it and re-engaging to what is the most important, like your trajectory is just going to take off. That's huge. That's huge. All right. Well, so I'm so grateful, Keith, that you were able to take um, time and jump on this call. Um, you know, it means a lot. I know the community really appreciates you and it was just good to get your perspective on that business planning part as we kind of launch into the other pieces of really how top producers uh, make it happen. Hey, Thanks, Todd, before, before Keith leaves, I want to compliment you, Keith, on a couple things that, as I've done interviews of top producers, I consistently see people that kill it. It's that leadership. You'll notice when the realtor reached out to them, you know, I want to do a meeting at this time. So many loan officers would just, I'm going to blow off my plans, my rhythms, my commitments, and, and that leadership you show, you know, where you said, hey, I can't make it at that time. Here's why. How about this time? That's called constructive tension, guys. You know, and that's called leadership. And people are attracted to leaders. There's just so much value. So, and then I, I love that quote, you know, be in demand, not on demand. And you, you clearly live that. So congrats, brother. And I just hope everybody listening to the call caught that leadership. And I, I would just ask you, are you doing that? You know, are you making sure that your prospecting time is sacred? And when someone tries to come in, and hijack that, you know, make you on, make you on demand for them. Are you going through some constructive tension? Hey, that's not a good time. This is why if you're not doing that, um, I, I can't urge you enough to do that. And that could be the difference between success and either failure or just mediocre success in 2020. So Keith, I know you got to get jumping. Thanks, brother. Thanks, guys. I really appreciate it. Have a blessed day. All right, my friend. We'll see you soon. Yeah, Dave, I think uh, Keith totally uh, 
totally crushed. It was good to have, uh, good to have him here talk through that planning, you know, that planning piece. And then, you know, we'll kind of shift gears and we'll, um, we'll finish out on this idea of this, of the calendar and the ideal week. And then, um, you know, throw in anything else that you want. You know, I'm, I'm uh, super excited to have you step in as the wingman for the second half. Yeah, no, no doubt, guys. And, and really, as you listen to Todd go through, you know, win by noon, daily disciplines, weekly disciplines, monthly disciplines, I'd say pay particular attention to this. If you are multitasking right now and you've got your iPhone going and you've got a desktop, literally the things that we're talking about over the next 30 minutes are what the best of the best do. And, and, and nothing is more important than this. So get after it and I'll jump in with any thoughts or, you know, takeaways. Super. And, I and remember, guys, being... I will also be monitoring comments if you have questions. Yeah, definitely. If you have questions, you know, throw them in there. And so, you know, I would say kind of a couple of things, right? As we go through this idea of the con of the concept of the ideal week, um, I'm just going to touch on it kind of high level um, because this is one of the habits of top producers. And I don't think that just because I say this is how I would do it or how I teach it and win by name does, doesn't mean need to be exactly how you do it, right? You heard Keith say, hey, I proactively prospect for two hours a day. There was a Forbes study a number of years ago where they actually um, interviewed and tracked the top CEOs of Fortune 500 companies. Like these are the best of the best. And um, they found that most of them did their most important work in only 90 minutes a day. Right. So here you are. I already told you that Josh Metal, his team prospects two hours a day. Right. Keith Collins, he prospects two hours a day. And, and this study by Forbes showed that the top CEOs, on, CEOs only did it for 90 minutes a day, whatever their top tasks were. During that time, that's when Jack Welch, right, the legendary CEO of GE, um, he was interviewed and he said, gosh, you know what? I don't even think it's that much. Like he doubted the 90 minutes that everyone said they were doing. He called BS on it. And so what I would tell you is that top producers divide up their activities into two different things on their calendar. One are daily disciplines. So I call them win by noon daily disciplines. And for loan officers, it's pretty easy. It's calling leads every day, right? Because studies show, regardless of who you follow, 90 to 94% of leads need to be called six times. And if you call them six times, you're 90 to 94% likely to reach them. Now I find that because most loan officers don't have this daily discipline of calling leads. They don't have that scheduled time that Keith talked about. They're typically only calling leads once or twice. In fact, studies show that it's barely um, over 10% of people that actually make lead calls more than two times. Ironically, that's not good when studies show that it is uh, six times that's going to get you there. So daily discipline is getting leads converted, right? Making lead calls every day. You should have a system for that. And I've got a lot of free content on that. So ping me, I'm happy to connect you with it. And then the other daily discipline is getting your applicants over the pre-qualification hurdle. Um, and one of the things that shocked me the most when I started helping people review their numbers was how many people were celebrating the application. Like, yeah, I got that application. Yet they were failing to get them over the finish line to be pre-qualified because it doesn't help if you get them a, an application, but they don't actually get that little letter in their hand to go out and go shopping. And so I would put that on your to-do list. If I was a leader, I'd put that on your loan officer's to-do list. Um, and then I think you have these target day activities. And, you know, again, this isn't a win by noon original thought. There's lots of coaches and coaching programs that do this and everyone's got a different day, a different style, but this is super easy. When you plant a flag in the ground and you say, Hey, this is what I'm going to do this day. Um, these are the calls I'm going to make at this point of the transaction. Um, and you consistently do it, then that's how you're going to win more business. That's how you're going to have happier clients, happier partners. And I find when people pick a day to do it, that they're, uh, more consistent because they've raised that flag. They've, they've told everyone they're going to do it. And they're more consistent because it's just easier to go into your CRM and say, okay, I'm going to make my update calls today on Tuesday. Hey, you know what? It's Wednesday. I'm going to call my pre-approved clients. So let me just search by them. Or it's Thursday. I'm going to update my realtors and give them a call. It's Friday. Hey, this is annual mortgage review day. These are things I think that are super critical. Now, some of you may be saying, well, gosh, Todd, I don't have enough transactions or enough pre-approved clients or enough realtors to make those specific days. That's okay. You can stack them. Um, you may you may have enough or have so many that you also need to add in a daily discipline of annual mortgage reviews. And we'll talk about that in just a minute um, in a little bit more depth as well, because I know that's Dave's favorite topic. Um, here's sort of what the what that looks like in win by noon world, right? So there's a page in the planner every week that's for the ideal week for that week. Um, and then, you know, if you talk about those calls I just threw in there, here's sort of what that would look like. 
And so I'll show you, you know, like for me for next year, I've already done mine. Um, and so this is the back page of the business planning tool. And so I just literally have it on there. I leave the afternoon open to react all the time. And then I, I dial every day, just like I tell you guys do on Fridays, I've got my mortgage coach call. So it's on there, right. Recording a new podcast. So we've got Thursdays um, dialed in for that, right. Coaching day, um, you know, team meeting day, all that's in there. So that's what my ideal weeks looks like. And so those are my big blocks. They're always in there and I'm planning around it. And that's what top producers do. And so we built that into win by noon every week. So that way, as, as your weeks change, right. Cause it's going to happen, right. Something's going to come up for, you know, for Keith this week, it was, he had to add in there um, the, the block that he was going to um, show up at the realtor office that he's at and that he would be there all morning. And so he would just go in there and he would just write it in there for the week off of that, off of that page. Um, I teach on this when I teach the business planning course in detail. So if you just go to winbynoon.com forward slash calendar, you can see there's a business planning class that's coming up. I'm going to be teaching that class towards real estate agents and loan officers. So that way, if you're a loan officer who wants to hold your realtor accountable and work with them next year, but you're unsure of how to teach it to them, show up on that class with them. And I will teach both of you, you know, together how to plan. Next habit of top producers, they document their day. And, you know, this is really something that uh, surprised me a little, but not a lot, that it was super consistent that when I ask a top producer, what do you do? They can actually go find, find it for me because they've actually documented it. So again, when Win by Noon came around, um, people started realizing that, gosh, you know what, that's a lot of work, Todd, but it's really helpful for me. And um, one of the top producers that I interviewed said, hey, if I'm not documenting my day, I'm just guessing at what I should do, right? Because there's a whole idea that activities lead to results. And so we already started off with what's the goal? How many loans do I want to close this year? But the question is, is do you know what it's going to take from an activity perspective to get there? And so I'm going to walk you through sort of how that's done in the win by noon world. And again, you can do that with other tools as well. Um, so here's what a spread in win by noon looks like, right? So, you know, when I hold up the, you know, the version of it, right? If I just pop it open, right? That's just, that's just what it looks like. But people always ask me, can you show it on a video? There's the spread of win by noon. And here's sort of the breakout of the important parts, right? So left page is a daily page. So every day has its own page on the left side, literally is just the calendar, right? So, you know, I go in there every day, um, you know, and I write on there, what, you know, what does my day look like, right? So if you look close here on mine, let me just bring myself up big. And so I'll show you kind of, cause this is how other people would do it. Right. So if I show you on mine, right, it started off with I drove my daughter to school, did my team call at 845. I prepped for the webinar. Then I had the webinar there. It's just a just a visual version of what my day is going to is going to look like because it's so much easier to see it visually. I can get there so much faster. If someone said, hey, Todd, what are you doing at noon? It's easier for me to, to get to my written planner than it is for anyone to get to their digital calendar. Guess what? Those things are also in my digital calendar, too. I do live in in 20. Uh, 19 and I realize you have to have that. I'm um, at the very top of the day or what are my top three things and what am I grateful for? And, you know, we already talked about that, right? Um, Keith talked about gratitude. We talked about, you know, Josh Metal's team's gratitude practice. And I would encourage you to somewhere in your day, get up and think it at least. Um, I like the idea of writing it down. There's a lot that's said when you write down who you're grateful for. And then again, when it comes to productivity of the best of the best, they're super clear on what their top three things are day in and day out. And so Darren Hardy would teach that his vital three are what are your top three roles? Could be client consultation, partner consultation, and lead generation. Uh, most win by new users use this, what are my top three things for today, right? And that's actually really how I use it these days as well. Although, you know, I know what my top roles are. My top roles are content creation for um, win by noon, you know, coach and lead my team. And then um, you know, coach and lead others, right? Help people, you know, help inspire other people. Um, but I would normally see this like right now today, I, I put on there, right? That the mortgage coach call is um, my priority. And then I'm doing a loan officer launch webinar for win by noon a little bit later. Um, those are my top priorities for the day. And so just be thinking about that. Should I be looking at that? Now, when I said that the best, the best um, start recording their activities, this is that piece. And so um, Dave, um, talk to that early on. He said, gosh, you got to record your activities because here's the deal, right? Some of you know how many loans you want to close at the end of next year. Some of you know, gosh, my conversion rate is 50% from application to close. So that's great. Some of you know, gosh, I'm converting from 50% from lead to application. So you know that you need four leads to get two applications to get 
one closed loan. But most of you don't know, well, what is that gonna mean from an activity perspective? And people measure it one of two ways. Some people, not a lot, measure it the way that Keith does. He measures two hours of prospecting time. Now, the reason that he does it that way because it's a commitment to him. What I find is that most people don't have that committed time in their calendar. And since they don't have that committed time in their calendar, they're better off using this part of win by noon or do it on a pad of paper, whatever you want to do, which is, which is actually recording those activities, right? So the top left is calling leads and clients. The top right is calling partners and partner prospects. Um, the blue part that's kind of below that is for other. Um, it could be for something different that you are doing. Maybe for Keith today, it's going to be how many people that I actually get face to face with at my meeting. Um, it could be um, for realtors, they put in their door knocking, or it could just be overflow because you made so many partner prospect calls there, so many leading client calls that you need that, right? Quality conversations is who did I talk to, right? Live meetings is who did I meet with? Now, oftentimes I'm asked, well, can a quality conversation be via text? Absolutely. It's 2019. You guys have people who, who communicate via text, via, via messenger. Um, and that's just, that's just great. That's how it should be. In fact, I've got one conversation recorded this morning that was via text, right? So I put a T next to it in that little box. Um, you know, the people use those little boxes for different things like, oh, um, you know, followed up with that person. Yeah, send them a handwritten note, whatever that is, but that's what they're there for. And then a live meeting is actually, you know, somebody you talk to. So Keith will have a lot of live meetings today because he's in that real estate office. And it's really critical because I can tell you that I've coached people who know that if they get 30 quality conversations, then that'll lead to one closed transaction. I've coached other people who say, gosh, if I can do 150 outbound lead in client calls um, every week, then I'm gonna, that's going to help me get to one uh, or, a, or eight to 10 closed transactions, they average nine um, in a given month. Here's the question. What is that number for you? Because it's not one size fits all, right? It's going to be different um, for somebody who works cold leads versus someone who works warm leads. It's going to be different for someone who works their sphere in their database than someone who's working cold leads. This is the tool to record the activities because success leaves clues, right? Your, your history what you're doing. And so if you're a leader, you should be encouraging your folks to start recording this activity so they can figure out what is it that they need to do day in and day out in order to get to their goals that they want. And then at the end of the day, you total it up. So um, this is the part where I know Dave's going to get excited because not only do we total up lead and client calls, um, we total up the partner and the partner prospect calls. Now I'll point out here, um, some people say, well, how come there's that white box um, when we first came out with Win by Noon, we did separate out lead calls and client calls, and we did separate out referral partner calls and partner prospect calls. So some of my original Win by Noon users just used the white box. And then, um, and then now they're starting to use like for new, new partner prospecting, they're starting to track, well, how many partners do I have to be calling and harassing each week in order to get a new partner? Um, and then down below, you'll see the totals for the other um, activities that you may have. You may have uh, partner prospect meetings, and then of course, annual reviews and TCAs. This is sort of the where we mortgage coached it because it's such a critical part of business in my mind. And we found so many people who use Win by Noon, our mortgage coach users. Um, and then that other box over there on the right is blank. What else do you want to be recording? You know, sometimes people are putting in their personal stuff. Um, that's an activity. Like I was, I was uh, putting my meditation in there for a while. Um, the right side of this is leads, applications, prequals, um, new in process is kind of one like a, like a, if you've been to a realtor meeting, they put like, Hey, this is an escrow. Um, some people love using that. Other people like, eh, nah, don't want to use it and then close. And then obviously we're tracking new partners there on the bottom, right? Again, not things you're going to get every day, but gosh, isn't it nice to celebrate those, you know, celebrate those wins. I see Dave popped on cause we said TCA. So that's always exciting. Yeah. Right. Uh, so, so guys, I want you to, to think about it like this. I mean, there is no doubt the single most important thing that dictates the success of a mortgage professional is how many conversations they're having. You know, like if you're not having enough conversations, if you're not doing enough prospecting, you're only going to have a certain level of success. Um, but the quality of those conversations is really going to dictate the output. You know, there are some loan officers that talk to 10 borrowers and they get you know, one out of 20, one out of 10, two out of 10, three out of 10. And then there are loan officers that are radically more efficient, more effective, because they're asking better questions and they're delivering a better presentation. So that's why the total cost analysis, it is a hallmark of the nation's best loan officers, because it's not just a visual deliverable that's superior, it's powered by great questions. 
you know, and questions beyond the transaction. You know, every loan officer asks, how old, how long do you think you're going to be in this home? Um, but then not every loan officer asks that question and then gives a deliverable that shows them. So I just want to, I want to put attention around that because it is, it's so essential. And then I, I do think in 2020 and beyond, it, there'll be a bigger and bigger gap between loan officers that are in the price transaction business and loan officers that are in the advice client for life business. And, and to be in the client for life business, you've got to be connecting mortgage strategies to a family's goal at the point of sale. And then you need to be doing annual reviews. And it can't just be a concept that I'm going to do when I have time. It needs to become a discipline that you do daily, weekly, monthly. You're doing those annual reviews and you're like, you're helping people get the right mortgage to achieve their goals at the point of sale. And then you're continuing to manage that over time. So I just can't emphasize how important that is to your success. Not because I'm Mr. Mortgage Coach, but because I've interviewed thousands of top producers and they all have those things in common. They, they do, they hit their prospecting goals and they deliver that perfect sales experience consistently and often. And then the other benefit is when you do the same thing consistently and you have a rhythm around it, you get really good at it. You know, you go from good to great. When you have an experience that for some clients, I give them my great experience and some clients I give my good experience, you never become great at delivering that experience. So anyway, just thought, love it. Keep it rolling, bro. No, I appreciate that. And I think what you said, Dave, that's really the key is, is that it's, it takes quality conversations with people in order to get closed transactions. But if you don't know how many people do you have to talk to do the closed transaction, how are you really going to hit your goal? And I find that top producers, that's one of their habits. So they total up what they did each day, right? So total it each day. And again, you can total it in lots of places. Some of this can be tracked in your CRM, but again, not, not normal. It's not a normal activity that most people are doing. Um, Real quick, just the right side of the page because people are, are asking, you know, looks like this. It's got a to-do list and then it's got these wins, these habits of success, which are other parts of your life that matter, right? Um, you know, the bottom part, sleep, exercise, morning and evening routines. I mean, that is consistently what I hear from top producers. You're not going to get Jeremy Forcier on here and who says, gosh, I didn't work out this week, right? I mean, they make it happen. Um, sleep, critical piece. Handwritten notes, again, ironically, wasn't in here originally for loan officers. It was in the real estate agent edition, and all the LOs were like, hey, I want to write handwritten notes too. Write social posts. That's a critical piece. And then this idea of on time, of scheduling on, you know, time to work on your business, not in your business. And then we also have the, I call it the bookend to the um, gratitude is what were the highs of my day? Like what really went, you know, super good yesterday um, that, you know, I want to, you know, kind of have a, a memory of, right? When you write that down, there's all the studies that show that writing things down makes it go to your head. So the bottom line is this, right? They know their metrics and they commit to them. Now, commit is a big word. I use that a lot, right? Dave and I did a call earlier this year um, with um, Andrew Paul, right? Uh, badass um, Navy SEAL all around um, this idea of setting a standard. So they know what their standard is. They know what their metrics are and they commit to it. And they're they're, they figured it out because they did this recording that we just talked about in, in whatever their tool is, win by noon or otherwise. Um, and then they go ahead and they make these weekly commitments based off of that. Because ultimately, in the end, you can look at it and say, okay, well, you know what? What do I want to commit to for my leading client calls this week? Okay. Hey, hey it's 150. Or maybe you got great, uh, better conversion rate. And you're like, gosh, if I just talk to 30 people this week, I'm going to get, you know, the number of, of uh, you know, loan applications that I need in order to get, hit my goal. You know, hey, how many TCAs am I going to do, right? Dave talks about this thousand TCA club. He's done such a great job of walking us through the different belts to become a black belt, um, you know, loan officer this year. And guess what? You know what? A certain number of TCAs is part of it. A certain number of annual mortgage reviews is part of it. But what do you need to do? You need to figure it out. You need to figure it out by recording the activity and then setting that commitment each week. Then they also review it, right? It's one thing to set it but it's a different thing to review it. You heard Keith say, hey, I do this quarterly planning thing. Um, and so what happens is we create a weekly review inside of Win by Noon. And so it looks like a lot there, but what you'll see at the top is you can rate yourself on, hey, how productive was I? Hey, did I work my plan? Hey, how are my daily disciplines, right? Um, it's got things on there around the, you know, sleep and exercise, morning, evening routines, new habits, right? So it's got all that in there and then you can kind of give yourself a little narrative on it and then it breaks it out, right? 
because you're looking at this proactivity versus reactivity piece and it ultimately says, hey, here's my goal in the left, the gray box, how did I do? So what I find is, is that the best of the best top producers actually take the time to actually review, look at their goal, you got to add it up. You have to have recorded it somewhere. And then how did I do on it? Because that's how you're going to course correct, right? The reason that we don't write an annual business plan and then not look at it till December is because we got to course correct along the way, right? If, if last year it took 30 quality conversations to get a closed transaction, but all of a sudden I look at it and, and it's, I'm trending more towards 35. Well, guess what? I better start setting a goal of 35 quality conversations. And what Win by Noon does is allows you to look at it week in and week out, month in and month out, quarter in and quarter out, because that's where you need it most likely, your team needs it. It's just a tool. It's just a way for you to actually take what you should be doing, what you know you should be doing. Maybe you're doing it somewhere else and it just gives you a place to do it. It also helps you at the end of the month come up with conversion rates. I mean, again, everyone says, what's a good conversion rate? It's 1% better than what your conversion rate was last month, but it's really critical how many applications do I need to get a pre-qualified client, right? How many leads that I have to get to get an application? So this is just a snippet. It's got way more in there. Plus you can put in any other conversion rates that, that you want. Um, but ultimately in the end is that if you're going to improve your business, the easiest way to do it is to improve your conversion rates, right? Dave already said that you have to have better scripts. You have to have better conversations. You have to ask better questions, um, have better tools like, like a mortgage coach and the TCA to get there. But I tend to find that people don't take the time to figure out, well, how is my conversion rate this month versus last month? Did something change, right? Do I need to do something differently? Well, how is the other person in my office who has similar leads to me? How are they doing? Can I compare myself to them? It's a great tool for you to figure out from someone else who's got similar business to you, how are you doing compared to them? Um, and if you're a leader to, to help your people figure out who needs to grow. And so, you know, I said this a little bit earlier, but it's this idea of, do you know what you have to do every day to reach your goals? And that's the whole premise behind this recording and reviewing part of win by noon. And they know what activities are required to get their results. Um, they also go ahead every week and they look at their activity commitments. So they say every week, this is what it is. I showed you before what the goal was. This is the, the piece in the planner where they look at each week and say, this is what I'm going to do. Um, and the reason that they do it is because they actually have, you know, made a plan for it. So like over here on the right side, you'd see Keith would probably have prospecting time. He's got that he's going to prospect for 10 hours a week, right? Monday through Friday, 10 to two. So he might track prospecting time there. And then there's the results goals, right? You're going to be looking at that. What is, what is my, what am I setting up for that? And I admit it, it looks like a lot of work. That's why I, I threw that slide in there. And I want you guys to understand it's hard, right? It's no harder for a top producer than it is for you. The difference is, is they make the choice. They make the commitment. They set it as their standard to do it. So I'm trying to give you guys a tool and a framework to do it. I throw out a lot of free content on there teaching it um, so that you can figure out how to put in whatever level of work. I would say it's going to meet you where you're at. You know, you may say, gosh, I'm not going to use each of those pieces today, but you can just implement one piece between now and the end of the year, right? You can implement a second piece in January. And I think that would be helpful, helpful. Um, and then the last thing is they win by noon, right? And so what I mean by that is you already heard Keith say it. Hey, I'm going to prospect for two hours in the morning. Guess what? Probably doesn't matter what he does the rest of the day. He can react all day, let everyone schedule all the time they want with him because he won by noon. 80% of you are morning and morning, early morning and mid morning people. Only 20% of you are afternoon people. If your energy is in the afternoon and you consistently get there and do your, your prospecting time, those lead calls, those Referral partner calls, great. Schedule this in the afternoon instead. But for 80%, the morning is the time. For the other 20%, what I found in my interviews is, is they tell me that they have more energy in the afternoon and they want to get to it. And I say, great. How often do you get to it? And then I pause and I watch the pain on their face when they say, gosh, not often enough. Because they don't get to that two-hour time block in the afternoon when they have the energy. So I would encourage you guys to throw that in in the morning. So there's a lot of words on this slide, but I wanted to um, throw it out there. And I used to throw this at the beginning of all my um, conversations I had. And it just says, hey, have you ever had a solid plan for the day? And at the end of the day, you realize you failed to accomplish your most important priorities. This is what happens, but it doesn't happen to top producers, right? It doesn't because they've got a written plan that they, that they know what they have to do. They're, they're really staying focused on it. One of the last things I'll throw in there and then I'm just going to uh, tie a bow on this and wrap it up. Um, they have a coach or an accountability partner. Um, we're throwing in a four week free accountability challenge for real estate agents and for loan officers. Um, starting next year. You can sign up for the launch webinar. It's on the calendar already. Um, winbynoon.com forward slash calendar. So I will help you be accountable 
I will help you help your partners be accountable. I think it's a great way to do it because again, you already heard Keith say it, right? Um, I know that coach Bill Hart is his coach. Um, I just saw him last week at master's coach and um, the best of the best have coaches and then accountability partners and studies show, studies show that that's great. Um, and then Dave wanted me to have a call to action. So here it is. Um, what do you think, Dave? I used the code TCA for them to get a free month of win by noon. Yeah, no, I, I love it. You know, mortgage church community, I uh, am very passionate about your success. That's one of the reasons why I do so many interviews is I think the combination of knowing what to do, but having that driven by real world success of your peers in today's market, not, you know, people that, hey, once upon a time, I was a successful loan officer. No, once upon a time, I was. But the most important thing I do today is I interview the best of the best. And I know for a fact the best of the best get their prospecting time in. I know the best of the best plan what they do. I know the best of the best record it. They don't hope they achieve their goals. They know they achieve their goals because it's documented. They know their plan. They know their actions. They're getting after it. So um, can't recommend enough. Uh, winbynoon.com forward slash mortgage coach put the code TCA to get value and uh, I hope everybody that's part of the mortgage coach community is also part of the win by noon Facebook group and community um, I'm, a, I'm a big fan and, and the other thing I love about Todd and win by noon is that it's, it's, he's not competing with other coaches who, regardless of who your coach is I'm not even going to list all the names of the coaches that I believe in, although, you know, building champions was, you know, the OG mortgage coach coach that anybody I've interviewed and they're in the mortgage coach channel, I interviewed them because I believe that they are a legit coach, that they bring a lot of value to the loan officers that they serve. And I love win by noon because it's, you know, regardless of who your coaching platform is, win by noon and the planner will help you track and plan any framework out there. You know, all the coaching platforms, they're, they're not the same, they're different, but they all have that commonality that we're intentional. We have goals. We track those goals. We measure those goals, and we're intentional about that. And one by noon helps you do that. So, so Todd, you crushed it today, brother. I want to remind everybody um, this Friday we're going to do another, um, you know, I'm not sure how we're going to title it, but we're going to have Bill Hart as our special guest. We're going to go through the top seven things from his perspective that top producers do. We're going to win by noon it. So we're going to wrap win by noon about round it again. And of course, we'll always be advocating a total cost analysis. Uh, Todd, anything else you want to cover or say as we wrap up today's call? Well, let me, let me throw a couple things out there. You know, I went through it pretty fast. So the reason I throw out so much free content in there is so that you can actually plug into that. So if you're like, hey, I want to learn more about the ideal week, ping me and I'll point you towards more information on how to dig deep in the ideal week. If you want to learn more about business planning, great. I'll, I'll put you in um, into touch with, hey, here's the next business planning webinar. Here's some content on it. Because again, it's so hard to go through it in just an hour, but I've broken it all down with tons of free places where you can get it. And I think, Dave, as you said, it's, yeah, it's coaching company agnostic. It really works with whatever it is you're doing. I'm so grateful that I've got so many other coaches out there that use win by noon with their, you know, with their clients as the accountability tool. Cause that's what it is. It's just a tool. And um, so there's a monthly subscription you can get. This just waves the first month. It's super cheap. It's 1299. So, um, you know, buy it now. It's going to go up after the first of the year. We don't have a discount on the annual subscription um, because it's going up after the first of the year. So you can order that too, but this just gets you where you'll get the first uh, version sent out again and you'll get the, mortgage coach branded version, which is super cool. I'm grateful for, uh, you know, Dave and the team for being such great supporters and, and allowing me to talk, um, talk about it. And again, we built it in there because it's the best tool, right? It's built into all win by noon. It's not just built into the mortgage coach edition, the TCA is in there an annual mortgage review. So, you know, uh, as always, you know, Dave, I appreciate the encouragement. You know, Dave gives me a hard time because I don't love to sell when I get onto these calls, but you know, in the end, I, um, this tool is what took me from 400 units a year to almost 550 units in one year. And I think that you can use this tool to improve your business, even if you just take pieces of it. So that's, uh, that's what I got. I'm super grateful. So, uh, stop sharing the screen so we can close out just video to video. Um, if you got value from today's call, please give it a like below. If you love it, 
Love it. Share it with your mortgage friends. Remember, this Friday, 9 o'clock, it's going to be myself, Todd, and Bill Hart. Uh, if, if you are getting value from Win by Day, share that. It's funny, I did have to remind Todd to make a call to action because he just, he loves to give value, 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 you know, as Gary Vee would say, jab, jab. And I'm like, Todd, make sure you throw a right hook. You know, uh, these calls are valuable, but they become more valuable when people, you know, take you up, they, they get the Win by Noon Planner, they use it personally, they, they, they become leaders to their realtors, they do real estate masterminds with their agents so that they're, you know, they're bringing leadership, they're bringing success to themselves, and they're bringing success to the people that they serve. So, so dude, appreciate you. Everybody, I hope you got value from this, this hour with, with Todd and Keith. We'll see you on Friday, and this call is a wrap. Take care, everybody. All right, my friend. Thank you guys so much. Grateful for you all being here today.